Welcome back to the cabin, friends. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> we made a pact before we even came here this weekend that <laughs> we're not going to do any work when we're at the cabin this weekend. Our only goal was to take as many naps as possible. Mm -hmm. Now that the work's out of the way <laughs> and behind us, actually there still is a little bit more to do after lunch. It's time to have some lunch and welcome you guys back to our cabin. It's been a great... Today's day two. Mm -hmm. We came up yesterday, but I think we left the house about 1030. We got here by two-ish, somewhere yeah. around then. We made Big. good time. Three and a half hours to get to town. I stopped by the grocery store, picked up some ice and just a couple supplies. Most of what we brought, we brought from home. Yep. And uh, it's been good so far. The weather's been beautiful. Absolutely. The cabin's staying at least 15 degrees cooler than outside. This morning, Todd woke up and he's like, it's kind of chilly in here. <laughs> <laughs> I wrapped up in a blanket when I got up. It's but been nice. We went down to, what, 49 last night or yeah, something? Yeah. And during the day, it's only highs of like 70, 72. So. Absolutely gorgeous. Blue sky today, absolutely stunning. We plan on getting some fishing in, hopefully. It's supposed to rain tomorrow, so it might be a cozy, good nap day inside. Mm -hmm. But we had quite an adventure yesterday oh yeah we made a lot out of the first day <laughs> totally unplanned i mean so i figure if our main goal was to take a nap let's just check day one off the bucket list <laughs> first thing when we got here so uh one of the first things we always do is walk down and see the river and i took the nap blanket with us and i said well we'll just see if we can't find a good spot to nap down there. It was a little hot on the beach, so we pulled the blanket off underneath the canopy of the trees and thought it would just be nice to just lay there and look up and... Our blanket was kind of squished down so there was ferns all around mm. us, all the way around with the trees overhead and the blue sky. Yeah, but <clears throat> The dogs were super restless the whole time, jumping, barking at things. I'm like, guys, just calm down. And I was about to give up anyway, and they just started like, like right at your feet. Right at my feet. I'm like, jumped up. I'm like, what in the world? I could hear it immediately. I'm like, oh, there's a snake. I stood up and I was looking around because they were kind of like circling something and sure enough, curled up. I'm almost positive it was a Misagua rattlesnake, the only kind of <laughs> rattlesnake we have here in Michigan. I'm not fearful of snakes. I wasn't even fearful in that moment. I praised the dogs. They did a great job just protecting us and alerting us. It was a small, like, what, maybe four... Like what three, was it? Three, three feet, feet long, probably. Feet, yeah. The body, the biggest part of the body was probably like that. Yeah. So um, I'm never, what I started to say, though, is I'm never fearful of snakes because we have this one, only one <laughs> poisonous snake in Michigan. And they're extremely rare. So, like, I'm not fearful at all walking around and nothing. Well, sure enough, <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, the dogs protected us and saved us. They did a good job. Good job, puppers. So they got a special treat last night for dinner. <laughs> but that wasn't the only time they protected us yesterday. I'm taking dogs for a walk. And they're always so alert. And they jumped and their noses peeked up. Look what they just saw. And I snatched them up as fast as I could. We've got a beautiful, very fluffed up, Porcupine, <laughs> just uh, yeah, ready to uh, do its thing. <laughs> yeah, you guys don't want him, honey. He's a bad, no, bad no, bammer no. jammer. Yeah, you calm down. Go ahead and put those quills down. We're not gonna hurt you. So tell him what we were thinking about porcupine poop for the garden. Oh, there's a tree down uh, the hill over there. And the whole base of the tree is probably two feet deep, six feet across of porcupine poop. 
and we were thinking about getting five gallon buckets and shoveling it and taking it home and putting it on the garden for fertilizer. Yeah. That might be the rarest form of fertilizer known to man. Where are you going to go, buddy? <laughs> Way up that tree. <laughs> I went out I had a cot A pine tree down Fell through the ground Oh, what a sound This must be a name I got a rock to stick to just my chest Wipe my eyes Dear queen of hearts I'ma grow you wild roses So you can learn to be kind oh So you can learn to be kind We're gonna... We've had enough of working. Will we work for like four hours today, I think? And long enough to put me in a bad mood. <laughs> I was me getting too. all cut up and scraped up and hot and I was like I did not want to do this <laughs> he's like just take a break I'm like no I want this over with yeah but once you get started it's like you just want to get done and like yeah you don't want to do it like halfway right. if you're gonna do it do it yeah which we did we completed it everything's cleaned up except for there's one big pile back there that needs to be cut up still but it's done. And I looked at him when we sat down and I said, that's enough. No more. <laughs> so we're getting ready to go fishing. I think we're just going to go straight down to the river. It's trout season still. I don't think the salmon are here yet. And I don't know how to fly fish. Yeah. So <laughs> he's getting me hooked up with just a normal fishing pole. So... I may not catch any trout, but. Yeah, I asked her, I'm like, hey, you want fish too? And she said, yeah. I was like, well, I kind of only <laughs> brought fly rods with me. So you see these little things right here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. These were all part of like um, a trout slayer kit thing that I bought one time. Okay. This little guy. Did he come with the trout slayer kit? No. Okay, well, I want the trout slayers. Okay. Yes. <laughs> she did. She said, yes, I'm going fishing and yes, I'm going to beat you again. <laughs> so, okay. I'm so competitive. <laughs> That's why I don't do anything that I'm not good at. Because I don't like losing. <laughs> <laughs> I only do things I'm good at. Yeah. I just don't really have any tiny hooks, I don't think. Oh, there's some in here. There okay. we go. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to do it. You can teach me though. So I grew up fishing as a young girl, but my cousins always did everything for me. <laughs> so I never really truly learned like how to tie a knot and all that kind of stuff. All right, it's all done. It's ready to go. A little crawfish with a little jig on there. I'd eat it if I was a fish. <laughs> you feeling good? Yeah. All right. See you guys down at the river.
I am hooked up in this big, huge tree. So I can actually climb out on it though, I think, and get it, get unstuck. So we're gonna try that. Ooh, yeah. You stepped on a frog? I thought it was a poop, and then I looked underneath my foot and it was a frog. <laughs> very, very dangerous. Yeah? Oh. Sorry. Your hook's loose. Oh. And that water's cold. Yeah, it's like Arctic water. <laughs> it's like most of this river is all spring fed. There's like various springs you can, if you walk the river, you'll find all kinds of spots where there's water just flowing right out of the ground. So it is cold, it never warms up. No, not even in the heat, heat of summer, it's still ice cold. Mm -hmm. And my feet are kind of purple. And that was <laughs> in the sand. That was fun, we didn't catch any fish though. We didn't even, I don't even think I had a bite. You no. didn't either? Mm -mm. No bites, no nothing. Just peaceful though. Very, very quiet. Quiet, quiet, yeah. <laughs> well, it's time for dinner. It seems like uh, almost every cabin video we do, we have the same type of meat. <laughs> so we're having carrots we brought from home, from the pantry. And instead of those London broil round little steaks like we normally have, this time we're going to try something new that we haven't actually had before. They're um, come from my local butcher shop. They're basically uh, little tiny lamb chops cut really, really thin. And then they put some type of marinade in it. I'm not sure what yet. I have a suspicion I may know what it is based on how it smelled. Um, but I've heard good things about them. So we thought, what the heck, let's give it a try. This will be the second time in the last week we've had lamb. <laughs> Both dogs are right here, ready for me to make a mistake.
What'd you put in these carrots? They smell good. That Bragg's all-purpose seasoning. Huh. And a little drizzle of maple syrup and some butter. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so these little pork chops look... Cute, kind of cute. Pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Lamb chops. They cooked up really fast. And I sprinkled a little bit of steak seasoning on them. Mm-hmm. Just a tiny bit on one side just to try to give it some extra flavor. Never had lamb chops before. See how we like it. Mm. At first, it tastes like any other meat, but then I, get, I do get a unique flavor to it. good nice and tender yeah very tender at first I thought like pork chop mm -hmm. but then yeah it's very good mm -hmm. probably 30 more pine trees over there easy oh oh we got oh geez. Felt just like the beginning of a bee sting. <laughs> oh, jeez. I smell it. Me too. <laughs> so we get asked sometimes how we leave our homestead like this and just take off for the weekend and, and get away when we have chickens and pigs and goats at home. Yeah, and... Often in the past, it was always we had a kid living with us. Right. Either Nick was home, Abigail was home, Cameron was home. Well, everyone's moved out <laughs> <laughs> now. So we unfortunately are like most of you who don't have adult children living at home that can take on the responsibility. But what we do have are awesome neighbors. And they have young teenage kids at home, and it was just I mean, I probably have three neighbors I know right off the top of my hand that I can contact and say, hey, we're going out of town this weekend. Do you want to watch the goats I'll, or the pigs or whatever? And I'll pay you 20 bucks a day. And they're like, heck yeah, I'm there. <laughs> right. So thank you, Joy. We appreciate you so much for watching all the animals because now we get to relax. It's been nice, but we worked. <laughs> yeah. We won't do that tomorrow. But that's fine. Tomorrow's supposed to actually rain all day, so we're kind of talking about what do we want to do tomorrow. Them dogs are still protecting us. <laughs> they are on, like, super high alert. I don't know what from tonight. Lord knows there's probably a snake or a bear somewhere <laughs> getting ready to pounce. Yeah. But it is shower night. We walked down to the river and hauled up our buckets for our showers. So we we're did. gonna get clean pretty soon and head in. It's Saturday night. So we got Saturday night. Blue Lake Public Radio. <laughs> All that old folk music we like to listen to on Saturday night. Yeah. They always tell really great stories. So it's part of our ritual here at the cabin. Yep. Thanks guys for coming along with us. And we hope you enjoyed it as much as we do. Talk to you guys later. Bye guys.